Hello, I'm Larry Lee with Brownfield Ag News. Congressman Tom Tiffany from Wisconsin's 7th District joins us now. The topic of the day, not elections, wolves. A week ago, just before the election, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service decided they would delist the gray wolf. I know uh, Congressman Tiffany has been behind that effort since his state Senate days. Now we have to look ahead. We know that January 4th is the tentative date for that. We know that the environmental groups will fight to stop it. What are you hearing in Washington? Yeah, so really pleased with the decision by the Fish and Wildlife Service. Would be even more pleased if the, in the next session of Congress that we take up my wolf legislation that would statutorily delist in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. Um, but it's a good step in the right direction. The thing that I'm urging right now is our Department of Natural Resources, since it already had a wolf season back in 2012 through 2014, successful. It was protective of the species while also um, having an appropriate season. They need to get a season scheduled right away. No foot dragging, let's get, uh, let's get it done because when I was in the legislature, we had uh, the framework all set up and we're able to do it successfully. I'm hoping the DNR will get on this right away and offer a wolf season yet um, here in 2020, 2021. I would imagine you would encourage all the affected states to at least get ready for such a season. Yeah, they should. I mean, they should be prepared. Many of the states already have um, have done this, like Wisconsin. So it's just a matter of dusting off um, what's there and implementing what is in the statute and rules in their states. And that's what we could do in Wisconsin. I believe they could do it relatively quickly here if they would um, just get after it. I remember uh, Senator Ron Johnson had mentioned that uh, one of the important things is to codify this so it can't be tampered with. Your wolf legislation, I believe, addresses that very thing. Yeah, that's correct. So I introduced wolf legislation about a month ago, and we really took time to make sure that we did it correctly. And let's remind our viewers here, Larry, why this is so important and what it does. It returns control to the states to allow them to manage the wolf population just like other wildlife species. That's the most appropriate place for it to happen is with the states. The other thing it does is it works off from what wildlife biologists told us six, seven years ago when the judge relisted the wolf. They said uh, it's time to get the wolf off from the endangered species because it's no longer endangered. And I refer to this as the Hotel California effect where wolves have entered the endangered species list, but they're never allowed to leave. And when an endangered species has recovered, they should be allowed to be removed from the endangered species list. As we go forward, what do we know about the uh, legislation you've authored? Is it getting any traction in Washington? We've certainly gotten some co-signatures. And while everything has been about elections here, especially over the last month, now that we get back to the business of legislating, um, I'll be making a real push to get more co-signers, get more people that will take this issue up. And I'm really hopeful that um, even with us probably not in the majority in the House of Representatives, we Republicans, I'm hoping we'll find enough common sense uh, conservative Democrats that will say, you know what, it's time to do this and get the wolf delisted. So we'll be working it and hopefully we can gain some success. Should your bill get through both sides of Congress, as we speak today, we don't know who the president is going to be. Any concern there? Um, Regardless of who the president is, I believe this um, bill makes complete sense. You have a species that is no longer endangered. It's time to remove it from the endangered species list, and it's just time to do it. Whether you're Republican or Democrat, it makes all the sense in the world. Are there any hearings set for this bill? No, no hearings set as of this point, but hopefully we're going to be able to get to that point once we get um, after January and we get a new session of Congress that has uh, been installed. So it's safe to say during the lame duck, we shouldn't look for any activity here, but in the new Congress, we should. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think it's doubtful anything would happen in the lame duck, but I have to say, Larry, um, I will be looking for every opportunity at every turn to be able to accomplish this. So um, I don't rule out um, doing it at any particular time because we are going to use whatever means necessary to do what is really common sense 
legislation that time has come. Let's go back a little bit. I uh, remember you were at both of the wolf summits in Wisconsin. And we heard over and over from agricultural groups, uh, individual producers, how important it was to get this wolf off the endangered species list for livestock health concerns. But uh, we even heard some from uh, upper Michigan Peninsula where it was a human safety issue to some of the constables up there. So it's going to be huge to get this thing done, isn't it? Yeah, it really is an example. You were listening there, and I'm really glad you remembered that. It was up in the little town of Marinisco, um, just across the Wisconsin border in the Upper Peninsula. The um, uh, local police chief was very concerned. Wolves walking down the street. People would not send their kids, grandkids out to go down and be able to see, or parents to send their kids to see their grandparents, whatever. I mean, that just shouldn't be. And so you have all these practical impacts that for people who do not live in wolf country, they don't fully understand. They don't understand the agricultural producer whose cattle are stirred up as a result of having wolves encroaching on them. It reduces production for both milk, the rate of gain for beef farmers. Those kind of things directly affect those operations and it can help put them out of business. I mean, agriculture has been under enough pressure over the last six to seven years to add this to the mix, it really makes it marginal whether they can continue to stay in business. So it isn't just a matter of depredation, them taking animals, it's a matter of harming the operation where it can no longer economically be viable. So all those things come into play and things have not changed up here in Northern Wisconsin. In fact, I think you're going to see another deer season for outdoorsmen that is going to be slim and people are starting to get really frustrated by it here in uh, the Northern half of Wisconsin, as well as down into even Wood and Jackson counties. And people are getting pretty frustrated in not being able to see any deer up here to be able to hunt. And I think you're gonna see the same thing this year and it might be real timely after the deer hunt for us to really publicly begin to push this issue. I remember uh, speaking with a farmer up in Ashland, Bayfield County areas, talking about how a young wolf took an 80 pound calf right over the fence with no problem and how nearly impossible it is to prevent them from attacks because the abatement measures they are limited to through the DNR just don't work. Yeah, well, this is all a product of the judge's ruling from um, after 2014, uh, which made no sense at all, where the only way you can dispatch a wolf is if it is going to imminently harm you. I mean, that's a crazy ruling that just is not grounded in common sense. If somebody's taking your, if there's a wolf taking away your livelihood, you should be able to dispatch that wolf. You can't even do that. And that's what leads to such great frustration and why at times you hear stories of people taking matters into their own hands, which is the worst thing that can happen. Anything you'd like to add today? Time to get the wolf delisted. And um, I hope people continue to up the pressure. It is incredibly frustrating that it has taken this long to continue through this process. But I can tell you that I will never stop in my efforts to do what is right, to get the wolf out of the Hotel California and get him delisted. Congressman Tom Tiffany joining us today on Brownfield. Thank you. It's good to be here, Larry.